Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Daily Thread. <clears throat> so happy to be here. Um, how are you doing? Okay, uh, we're doing good. We're back in the, the swing of things after a, uh, you know, if you're following the bouncing ball and a couple of, yep. uh, we had a little bit of a, a little bit. So we had a traumatic week last week, you know, and uh, quick trick, quick, quick trick. <laughs> quick trip to Eretz which yeah. uh, which is very tiring, uh, you know. And uh, it's uh, it was a very trying week with the passing of uh, your your Bubby, your grandmother, and she was a great part of our lives uh, for a very very long time. Your life since before you were before since you were born, and uh, yeah. my life for the last uh, 40, 45 years. So um, there's a a healing process underway, and um, it's different than what it was when my father passed away 33 years ago. Um, but it's still, um, it's still uh, people that are out there that experience to understand what I'm saying, and those people that you know Baruch Hashem haven't experienced it, it really probably cannot relate to it. But there's a healing process underway, and it takes time. That's the uh, that's the bottom line, and Hashem should have Nalia and. I think there's a big, uh, if you, I don't know if you want to go in this direction, but it's a big neglect out there about, uh, we're, so, we're so busy in our physical world and our material lives that we don't uh, don't dedicate enough time to understanding uh, what's going on out yeah. there in the great universe. Definitely. Well, maybe <laughs> we'll, we'll discuss that at some point. For today, we're going to stick with the Irish Kite stories, because why not? <laughs> okay, what do you got? <laughs> what do you got? Uh, I have this headline here. This is actually something that has been on my mind a little bit. Um, but this story is via Yeshiva World. It says, the headline reads, Chutzpah, self-checkout machines now asking for tips. Oh, you, know the feeling, you know the feeling of annoyance when buying a coffee for a dollar and being prompted by the payment processing yeah. machine to give another dollar as a tip? Yeah. Well, it's a lot yeah. more annoying when you pick up some products at a store head to the self-checkout and are still urged to give a tip. So what we're seeing nowadays is people are, you know, it's one thing if a waiter helps you and you're giving a tip or, you know, you think it's annoying that you order a coffee and the person behind the counter is, oh, do you want a tip? Because I did make you this coffee, which is kind of you're paying for the coffee. But nowadays when you're, when you're going about, going um, about your business doing, using self-checkout, it's asking for a tip. And the question is, who are you tipping? Well, right. you know, you know, TIP stands for it's an acronym. TIP. It stands for to ensure proper service. Tips. You know, you want to make sure that never you, knew that. Uh, listen, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you out yeah. <laughs> to ensure proper service. That's why they're not giving you a tip on who to bet on in the Super Bowl. It's to ensure proper service, and whatever you're doing, it depends how long you plan on being there and how often you plan on purchasing things in that store. There's a hotel we used to go to in Miami beach where I used to go down to buy coffee in the morning. And it's always, you, know, you buy two coffees for, I don't know, $5, $6. And there's always a line there for a, a gratuity, a, a tip. What are you going to do? You're going to go down there every morning for a week. You, you know, you don't want to be a cheap guy. You don't want, you don't want to have to be yeah. treated like a, like, like that. So it's almost like paying a ransom. In a way, so make sure that you're uh, that that you serve properly. The thing you have to be really watch out for is very often the tips are included in the in the cheshbon in the in the bill to begin with, but there's still an extra line there in case you want to give an additional gratuity. So you get a you get a double tip. Anyway, what's the world's problem with it? Well, the world's problem is that it, it's it's being seen around the world, but now it's being seen in many from owned stores. So, according to a recent report in the Wall Street Journal. Numerous companies, including airports, bakeries, coffee shops, and sports stadiums, have introduced self-serve tipping options, despite patrons having zero interactions with an employee. The tip is, of course, optional, but as anyone has encountered them can attest, they leave you feeling guilty if you choose not to tip. So if businesses are going to ask for tips, perhaps there should be a fine print section explaining where the tips are going to go. Will the tips go to the employees, or are they being pocketed by the boss? Well, so, you yeah, have see those big containers they have outside of car washes. Well, they want you to throw in a couple of extra dollars. They charge you thirty dollars to wash your car, and they still they want you to, um, you know, throw something in for the cleaning crew. Otherwise, they're not going to do such a great job uh, in drying drying your car. But your car will drive anyway eventually. So 
I don't I see, know, right? I don't know. Or it's going to rain the next day, so I don't know what the, what the big deal is. But listen, the the hustle is on in in, in a modern world, and people are trying to make uh, you know whatever they can uh, from whatever direction uh, possible. Listen, I want you to know. I mean, I was in school this morning, and I have to tell you, uh, I was surrounded by five guys with credit card machines. You know, <laughs> that's not, that's not new. I know it's not new, but it's a little t- intimidating, you know. And if you if you if you take out a dollar and you want to give them a dollar, they 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 like put the credit card machine in your in your face and and tell you a story about. Uh, I'm sure it's a true story about you know how how they're very much in debt or they're making a wedding or somebody not well, and you know uh, from from giving a a dollar, which is standard, okay, maybe. Maybe you should give more since there's so much inflation and it's 2023 already. But um, I mean, what, what do they want you to do? Go down in the morning and, and give fifty dollars to everybody that's uh, that, that that's collecting? They're not they're not putting a credit card machine in your face because they want two dollars instead of one dollar. Well, you know, it's, again, tzedakah is a beautiful thing. I, I have found it increasingly difficult to daven in some places, as like you can't you can't daven because there's a constant barrage of people collecting. So it's, it's literally hard to, to sit there and daven without being interrupted every, let's say three, four minutes being asked for money. Now I have nothing wrong that, you know, stuff is a beautiful thing. Just, of course. you know, when and where. Well, listen, some shuls allow it, you know, and some shuls, uh, don't allow it. Uh, you know, there's a shul in, uh, in Eretz Yisrael, uh, uh, in Rechavia called Oho Yitzchak, they have a person in charge, like an air traffic controller. And he controls the amount of people that go in, and when X amount of people that do collecting come out, he sends them the next batch of people, and they walk around the shul collecting. I think that it's a, it's in a, it's in a wealthy area, it's an upscale area, and I think the people who walk over from, I think, from Meshiarim or Gaula or other parts of Yerushalayim, you know, this is how they, uh, is how they, they support themselves uh, uh, and their families. And then there are other shuls, uh, or even by a, what about by a simcha? You ever go to a wedding and guys are walking around collecting? It's a little bit intimidating. It used uh, to be a thing, by the way. It used to be a thing that people would give, in some circles, I guess, they would, people would collect for the chassan's limo. You know what I'm talking no, about? I never heard that. No. <laughs> really? I've who, been at weddings. Who collects, where, who collects for the Chassan's limo? His friends? Uh, his friends or brother. Yeah, I've been at many weddings where they're collecting for the Chassan's limo. I never heard that. I think you've been uh, I think you've been defrauded, actually. Oh, you think so? <laughs> I, I never you think heard so? I never heard anything like that. I think a limo's paid for in advance. What? I mean, oh. and what if, that, what, if, what if he doesn't collect enough money for the Chassan's limo? The limo's leaving. No, the limo, the limo, no, the limo is paid for in advance, but they're, they're, I think a friend pays for it, and he's just tr- trying to, you know, recoup the, the business. Um, no, I think um, there is an option where yeah. you could uh, pay the caterer. Uh, I don't know, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, five thousand dollars, and he takes care of all the regular collectors, and that's a fee for not allowing people into to, to the wedding to intimidate your guests, to intimidate and harass your guests. So you know. Well, we don't like intimidating guests, and we don't like harassing anybody. And this is a perfect time to bring up our friends at Sensible Marketing, <laughs> the number one people in the nursing home marketing <laughs> yeah. field. From virtual tours to you know white glove service, Sensible Marketing is there for you to make your nursing home as attractive as possible for for potential residents. So you need to head to sensiblemarketing.com. That's sensible. That's sensiblemarketing.com. They have an amazing team, um, awesome, awesome employees. Good times, good times all over from Shimmy J, Ron, Jeremy, and Co. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. SensibleMarketing.com. They are the nursing home com- uh, nursing home marketing company that you need in your corner. So make sure to reach out to them today. Um, yeah. on, the, on, on the same subject with the, with the valet parking, you know, uh, some halls they ask you if you want your car parked regular or you want premium parking. You know, and really, you, yeah. And if you give the guy, if you give the valet. Ten dollars, he'll make sure that you don't have to wait for your car when you come out. I think that's like a trade secret, though. Like if you go to a terrace of rum and 
and really, you know, a terrace run valet is it's brutal. It's tough. You know, you're in Williamsburg and it can take a very long time. But if you hand the guy a twenty, he'll keep your car up front the entire time. That's right. If you plan on running, if you plan on running into a wedding at a terrace run and just being in there for like five ten minutes. Then, yeah, but it's not only there. I've I've seen it in other places too, uh, and it work it works it, go, it works against you at the same time. If you say no, thank you, and you want to give this guy a dollar, you're going to wait a long time for your car, <laughs> especially in the winter yeah. when it's brutally cold outside. Yeah, well, we don't want that. Anyways, big news uh, this week is that Isha Rebo is having a huge concert at Madison Square Garden, and he will be the first Israeli. <laughs> to ever headline a concert in Madison Square Garden. The Orthodox singer Isha Ribo, whose music has attracted a diverse audience of religious and secular Israeli fans, will be the first Israeli artist to headline a concert at New York City's Madison Square Garden. Um, I know in this concert is also going to be featured Akiva, Terjuman, and Amir Dadon. Um, so this is big stuff. This concert is taking place in September. Um, so September 30th. People can... People can go ahead and – yeah, September 3rd that is. People can go ahead and get their tickets. There's going to be 20,000, I think, seats available. And what a Kiddush Hashem it could possibly be to fill 20,000 seats of Jewish people gathering together during Elul to hear music, uh, meaningful music, to hear a message from Isha Ribo, uh, Amir Dadon, Akiva. And I'm sure there will be other guests as well. Uh, it's really well, exciting. It's very exciting. I think it's a breakthrough type of situation. Uh, a lot of very popular Jewish artists have trouble filling up Brooklyn College or Queens College, where there were yeah. two and a half yeah, thousand, well, you know, there's not that many, there's not, seats. Not that many types of. We we've seen the Jewish music concert concert scene evolve lately. You know, I think we've seen that with the rise of people coming out of Israel, like Yishai Ribo uh, and and uh, and his friends, where you know Archer Af sta- uh, Archer Af <laughs> Stadium. Last last year was right. was sold out from an Ishariba concert and King's Theater, so it's getting bigger and bigger. And obviously, Madison Square Garden is going to be the biggest one yet. That I think the last concert I've been at at Madison Square Garden was the event with Lipa Schmelzer, but that wasn't in the main Madison Square uh, Garden. Oh yeah, there's a smaller Hall. venue. That was yeah. That was a smaller venue that maybe had 3,000 seats. All right. 19, 19 20,000 seats. Well, first of all, Ishariba is extraordinarily talented, as you know. He's a great songwriter. He has a beautiful voice. He has a great reach, and he's what they call a crossover artist. He uh, crosses all the lines in, in Jewish music. You know, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to pick anybody in particular, but the Israelis, the couple of hundred thousand Israelis who live in Long Island or in Queens, are not necessarily uh, going to, uh, you know, hear Mordechai Ben David or, or Avram Fried or Benny Friedman. Yeah. Um, but you're going to have uh, people from every segment. Of the uh, front population, which is a few hundred thousand people in New York, uh, are going to come to Madison Square Garden. So all of a sudden, uh, when you're talking about a population of about 250 to 300 thousand people, you're talking about 10 percent of that population filling up uh, Madison Square Garden. And I, I, yeah. I think there are people that are on the fringes of the Jewish community that are fans of uh, of Ishai Rebo. His sound, uh, his music, uh, his lyrics, uh, the way he couches the tefillos inside of uh, uh, of music, and uh, it, it's not. Uh, I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised that it'll be sold out uh, uh, very quickly. And like you said, we we saw him. Not willing. We, I think we both saw him two times previously, right? We saw him at the Chief University graduation in Arthur Ashe uh, Stadium um, about a year ago, right? It was about yeah. a year ago. And uh, we saw him when he at, at the King's Theater on Flatbush Avenue, which also has about 3,500 uh, seats. And it's a beautiful venue. Um, he reaches the he reaches the crowd, and um, and it's just a. I, I like the King's Theater better than the. Uh, than the <laughs> Listen, I think the story the story here is not about the venue or, or anything like that. I think it's it's the fact that here's an opportunity to have 20,000 Jews come together in a in a stadium. And the the potential for Kiddush Hashem, the the potential for Kvoch, you know Kvoch Shemayim is incredible. Um, you, you're gonna, I bet, you know, I, I bet there will be many, many different types of Jews coming under one roof, and that's what Yisharibo does. That's what Akiva does. It's their music is is a music that unites unites people, and especially in times that we live in, which are very 
interesting times and and times that many of us are divided. It could be it could be an event, it could be a concert that is more than just music. Um, and I think that's what the producers have in mind. Not just about selling twenty thousand seats and making a buck, but it's an opportunity to make an impact. Make an impact. And I think that's what they're going to do. I was trying to say, uh, I was talking about uh, technical, you know, construction of the different uh, venues. I was saying that, um, like, in, in, the, in the tennis stadium, I thought it was just too noisy. And people were jumping around too much. Yeah, I mean, the, I sound, the sound could be a little bit, the sound could be, listen, we know Madison Square Garden, Madison Square Garden is built for, oh, for yeah. concerts. Like, this yeah. Billy Joel yeah. performs there every single month. Yeah. So, listen, it's in quite a while from now, September 3rd. But just people can know they can get their hands on those tickets. Um, well, they, yeah, yeah. they even get their tickets? I bet. Let's see. Uh, well, the marketing. Well, well, all you have, to, you have to look into two-page spread in the Five Town Jewish Times last week. <laughs> yeah, which tells honestly, you, you how find to get it. You, you can find it on honestly. If you if you Google Isha Rebo concert, you can find it on StubHub. You can find it on Ticketmaster. You can find it everywhere. So uh, if you're looking for tickets, you will find it. Um, but that is our story. That, that is that is our stories for today. A shorter episode for today, but we'll be back with you tomorrow on another episode of the Daily Thread. So stay tuned. And uh, as usual, we love hearing your feedback, and we will speak to you soon. Have a good night.